So now this part that's left is going to be made into a pizza base. So I need a tray to put this onto and I've got one here. So remember, you only need this um, recipe at the beginning. So that can go away. And here we are. Here's some pizza ingredients uh, that I thought might be quite good. Try and not make what I call a dog's dinner where you just dump everything from the fridge onto a pizza. That's not what pizzas were ever meant to be. The idea of pizzas, of course, comes from Italy. And um, the idea of pizza came originally from the days when everybody used to take their bread to the local baker's oven to have it baked. And then there were little bits of dough left and someone, some very clever person, decided to use up the ends with one or two ingredients on top and call it pizza. Australian, American and British uh, pizzas are not anything like Italian pizzas. Italians go for quality rather than quantity. Uh, so do French people in their cooking. They would rather have a little of something really good rather than a lot of something really poor. So it's better to have a little of something really good and I'll talk to you about that uh, as we discuss other ingredients. So this time I'm using a rolling pin to roll out a pizza base. If you haven't got a rolling pin you can press this out quite well with your hands just doing that or you can roll perhaps um, a glass bottle use a glass bottle to roll it but really you can get quite a lot of this done with your hands and I've just remembered I was going to do two different ones oh, well maybe I'll use the other dough with it right do one with this and then go back to that one and do another all right now a pizza base is not meant to be too thick and I know a lot of you like cheese filled crusts and all the things that you can buy from the pizza shops but that's not really what we're about today uh, it probably would have been better if I had some semolina to put on here but I don't want to bother looking for it I know I've got it um, I'll just put some oil on the paper roll this round the rolling pin till it looks like a sausage roll and the rolling pins the sausage and then unroll it on the tray like that now this is going to keep rising uh, until I put it in the oven. All right, over here, just earlier on, I cooked up some onions and garlic. I sautéed them, remember, in some olive oil, sautéing mean cooking without colour till they were soft and kind of translucent or see-through. And then a tin of tomatoes went in there and then I'm going to flavour it with a little, just a little, um, balsamic vinegar, which is also from Italy. And that's, whoops, that's a dark brown, really sharp but tasty vinegar to give this some flavour. And then flavour always requires salt, some salt in that sauce, not too much. And then I've got dried oregano. Uh, fresh is better but this is what I've got and I think about that much maybe half a teaspoon is enough remember I said to you the other day or on another film we were talking uh, the pizza loaf film I was talking about the difference between fresh and dried herbs and that the flavor of dried herbs is very concentrated so you use a lot less of that right Um, you might find that my ingredients are quite limited compared to what you would like, but that's how it is at the moment. Anyway, so I'm going to put some of this onto just not too much. Now, some people use tomato paste as a base. If that's all you've got, I would probably 
uh, dilute it with a little bit of water or even some olive oil. Mix up tomato paste and olive oil in a cup and then spread that. Tomato paste, I think, is too strong and a bit acidic, but if you like it and you think that's fine, then use it. There are all sorts of things that I wouldn't eat that some of you really like. And it's you that's going to be eating it, so that's fair enough. So that's the sauce that I made. Onions, garlic, balsamic, uh, salt, oregano. And then on top of this, I've got some mozzarella cheese from a bag, which is already grated. Surprisingly, sometimes it's actually cheaper to buy grated cheese than it is to buy a lump of cheese. And that really surprised me. Um, so what you need to do when you're choosing ingredients is have a look at the price label in the shop and it often says underneath the price per 100 grams or the price per kilo and it compares that. Um, so that's what I've got there and I have, I just happen to have um, some pesto which is made from basil olive oil, garlic, so I'm going to put little blobs of basil on there. Now at times like this when money's short and I know a lot of people have lost their jobs and things are really difficult, I'm not expecting you to go out and buy expensive ingredients or anything like it. This is not to cause any stress in your families. I'm just showing you things you can do. So we all have to alter as we go. I had feta cheese the other night for something. It doesn't last all that long, so I'm going to finish it on this pizza. Okay, use what you have. If you really want to use barbecue sauce on the base, it's not right, but it doesn't matter. Use what you have, even ketchup on the base as long as it's not too much. And that is really enough to make a nice pizza. That's perfectly okay. Um, usually the Italians would say no more than four ingredients on a pizza. So we've got tomato sauce, two cheeses, and some pesto. Oof, don't have to eat my own words. There we are. If you would like it to go slightly more golden and crusty, you can drizzle olive oil around the outside of the crusts and then just massage or rub that in not too much and that helps to make it crispy and give it more flavor if you don't have olive oil don't do that it doesn't matter okay so there's the pizza and there's some bread rolls they're going to both take time to prove or rise on the top of the stove so what I'll do now is just, just do one more. Here's the one that we made together. And uh, I'm going to cut this one in half. This would be a good house for people to come to tonight, wouldn't it? Uh, but we're not allowed to have visitors over. Isn't that a shame? So what I'm going to do is um, freeze some of this. I might freeze half the pizza in two halves. And then it meal, means I've got meals ready in the freezer for another day. So this is the full quantity of bread dough. That actually could be made into a loaf. Um, because at the moment you're only allowed to buy two loaves from the supermarket. So maybe you could make a loaf with this. Or because I have um, I've roasted the pumpkin, we might as well use it. Uh, I'll make another pizza base and we'll do it with pesto, roast pumpkin and maybe some parmesan cheese and I think that would be nice too. So you substitute whatever you have, whatever you can use and don't stress about this. If you can't get yeast to go with the flour that I gave you, just keep the yeast, uh, keep the flour in the bag sealed somewhere cool until we can get yeast and meantime you can jump to any other lesson on sector and do that so there will be a lot more coming 
And uh, the next thing I'm going to do, possibly this afternoon actually, is to make hot cross muffins, which is what you were going to make for your Easter cookery. And then maybe tomorrow, if my cameraman is working tomorrow, um, I will do the rice, chocolate rice crispy bowls uh, made with coconut fat and some cocoa and chocolate and I'll show you how to make those and they get filled with marshmallows and miniature Easter eggs for Christmas, <laughs> for Easter, sorry. So they're a bit of a treat um, but what I want to do it also is we need to have a theory lesson because I need written work from you as soon as possible. But don't forget, I'll get to that, that will be another lesson. But don't forget, whatever cooking you do at home, it doesn't matter what it is, photograph it and send it to me, either via sector or via email. I really don't mind. Right, um, I'm going to put this roasted pumpkin here and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Roasted vegetables are absolutely delicious. It's a really nice way um, of having vegetables in a different form. Uh, and like other, um, let me think of the word I'm looking for, the flavour becomes concentrated in them. All right, so there's another pizza base. I don't have many pizza trays. I don't eat pizza at all. So I'm just doing it this way, that's fine, on this sort of tray, lined with paper, spread out. Uh, I'm going to put a, a drizzle of olive oil around the edge of it this time before the other ingredients go on. There we are, that helps to make it golden and nice and also gives it good flavour. And then instead of using the pesto to blob on the top, I'm going to use the pesto as a base this time because I know that this goes really well with pumpkin as a flavouring. Now, pumpkins are fairly cheap just now, although a lot of things are getting more expensive, but um, it's, it does, you can do an awful lot with pumpkins with your cooking. Later on, I've already made a film of me further on in sector making vegetable soup. There is a video of that. Uh, it was a vegetable broth, but in that lesson there's also a very good pumpkin soup recipe attached to that lesson. But um, I'm rather pleased. We've never, we haven't grown pumpkins at this house for, I don't think we've ever grown them here, and we've lived here for a long time. But look what we got. We got a batch of these. We grew about six of these, and I think they're called golden nugget pumpkins so they're rather cute and really lovely they're a bit warty i don't know why i have to ask my expert expert gardener next door but anyway they're very usable um, but this one is butternut pumpkin that i've got here now i sliced it with the skin on i quite like the skin it's perfectly edible and quite honestly it's safer um, just to leave it on and roast it that way. But if you don't want the skin, still cook it with the skin on and then take a knife and pull the skin off. But I think that's a waste. I think it's a waste of pumpkin. It's perfectly nice to eat. It's not coming off. I'd need to sit it on a wooden board and cut through and I don't want to cut my mat with the knife. So. Um, but that's up to you. But it's actually very nice. And anything that you eat, any vegetable, where you eat the skin, it actually gives you more nutrients and more fibre, which is really good for us. So um, we'll be talking about that later. Talking about nutrients, the base of the pizza, the bread dough is basically carbohydrate. Um, the pumpkin will have vitamins and minerals in it. The olive oil, of course, is a fat, but it's the most healthy fat that you can have. And that's a classic case of you don't need a lot of it, but it gives a really good flavour. 
I'll just not use, I'll use that bit for something else. So, there we are. Then I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese over this one. Um, you use whatever you have. Just use grated cheddar if you like. But uh, sage is also another herb that's really lovely with pumpkin. So a nice Parmesan cheese over that one. Isn't this a shame? It's a beautiful night. Well, it's 20 past 4 in the afternoon. It's sunny and really nice and I do wish I could have friends round and share my pizzas. But anyway, they'll go in the freezer for another time. We have to look after each other. Uh, and before I finish, I would like to congratulate Tara, Bryce, Isabella, Kay, uh, Amy, Noah, Talise, Jack Green, Joel Bain and Caitlin for already having sent me photographs and emails of practical homework that you have done. Well done. I'm really impressed you've got on to this quickly. Now, whatever you make, photograph it and don't forget, I'm going to attach later on today the questions that you always have to answer every time you've cooked. What worked for you? What worked well? What didn't work so well? What did you learn? And what are you going to change next time? Those are important questions to write in your evaluation because that's part of your marking. It's part of the Australian curriculum. It's not just to please me. It's what you are required to do. So thank you very much. That was a long lesson. Uh, thanks for listening and watching. And if you have any questions, email them to me. I will be online, visible I think, from every Tuesday uh, on the days that I would normally be at school. If you send me messages at night, late at night, don't expect me to be sitting waiting and answering them. Um, we are not going to be doing much of that, uh, but I do have time on other days to have a look in the daytime. So I won't answer questions immediately unless it's a Tuesday but I will answer them. So uh, please keep in touch. Wash your hands regularly. Distance from other people outside. You should be living in the bubble of your family at the moment. Um, when you are outside, you need to be two meters away from people. Do not congregate on the beach because it's a lovely day. We're not allowed to do that. And this will help protect yourselves and your families and particularly your grandparents. Take care and keep in touch. Thanks. Bye.